Hey guys, welcome back to the Computer Headquarters YouTube channel. Today's video is another episode that's related to the i9-9900K 2080 Ti build that's in the Cougar Conquer case. And this episode, if you want to call it, is specifically about this bad boy right here, uh, which is the 2080 Ti video card and adding this uh, fancy looking water block to it. As you can see, this is already finished. This is after I recorded all the footage. so. Um, anyway, if you haven't checked out all the other footage I've already done, go back and look at the album. And, uh, and if you've already watched all that, go ahead and stay tuned here and we'll put this together. So I've got this RTX 2080 Ti on the test bench here and it's loading superposition. We'll see how it turns out. Okay, we ran superposition. It passed wonderfully, no problems. And now I've been running Valley on like the most extreme setting. Uh, and it's been running for a while. The reason why I'm doing this is because the RTX cards have some known issues of failing where you'll see artifacts on the screen. They kind of look like space invaders when it happens. It's really weird. I've personally seen it uh, in person. We did have one card that did fail uh, that when we when we tested it. So. Um, I've seen the Space Invaders, and this card does not seem to have that defect. It seems to be perfectly fine, so I'm good with moving forward and putting all the water cooling equipment on this card. So let's uh, let's take it off the test bench and uh, move to working. All right, here we are with the 2080 Ti. Again, this is uh, the ASUS RTX 2080 Ti Turbo model. Turbo meaning that it has a single blower style fan. This is probably not the ideal type of cooling solution for a lot of people that have tons of case fans, but if you're the type of person that maybe has like a uh, branded build, like a HP, a Dell, an Alienware, something like that, where there's not tons of fans all over the case, then this blower style is actually really good for you because it will take the air from inside the case, which may be hot air, and shoot it right out the back here and remove <clears throat> remove all that heat from inside your case and move it to the outside of your case. I hope that makes sense to you guys, but as a contrast, a video card that has two or three fans on it isn't typically moving any air outside of the case. It's only moving the heat away from the video card and distributing it inside the case and hoping that there's a bunch of other case fans that are exhausting that will move all that hot air in the case outside of the case for you. As an example... This 1080 Ti Strix right here has three fans, and this does not exhaust air outside of the case. I mean, sure, there's a couple of vents there that could push some, but it's not designed to move the air through the outside of the case. It's designed to move the air through the heatsink and then dissipate it out through the heatsink on the top. This is an open air case, so this is fine for the this uh, the way that we're doing this. This is a really good setup because the air is just going to all be sharing the air with the room. Um, there's no enclosed air like you would have in a regular computer case. Anyway, a lot of times you can get these type of cards for a little bit cheaper than the uh, double or triple fan versions. And uh, we did save a lot of money going with this one because, as mentioned in some previous videos, this is actually a factory refurbished card direct from Asus. We sell a lot of this type of product here at our store. Um, in any case, uh, let's go ahead and start working on taking this apart so we can install our EK water block. One thing I'm going to mention, though, before I forget is typical of something that can happen with Amazon. This box, as soon as I opened it, you can see that's cut. I didn't do that. This thing was just like this in the box. You can see someone has already ripped that apart. Someone's been in this box before. This is a, not a new product. This is an open box product. I'm hoping there's not any missing hardware. Otherwise, we're gonna have to uh, send messages to Amazon, look at doing returns, uh, all that kind of fun stuff. But uh, anyway, let's take, you know what, actually, we'll, let's open this first because if there is missing stuff, there's no point in taking all this apart if we don't have all the parts to do the job. So here we go, I'll open it up. And I'm doing this with one hand right now because I'm an idiot, so that's me. 
It's all, also possible there's a lot of scammers on Amazon. So someone could have ordered this for their card, put an old one in it that they were using on a previous card, put that back in the box and return it to Amazon. And the people at Amazon don't know any better. They're not good at checking this kind of stuff. I'm very familiar with this, this kind of problem. Um, but yeah, it could be an old water block for like a GTX 780 that the person just threw back in here. But that's not the case. This is the correct product. You can see uh, right there, it says 2080 Ti. Um, and it does look good there. So uh, we do have hardware here. It'd be impossible for me to know if anything's missing at this point because it's just a Ziploc bag that someone could have resealed. Um, so unless there is an instruction manual that says everything that should be included, then I wouldn't really know any different until I started working on this. Um, there actually isn't an instruction manual, which is really, really surprising to me. Let's see. For compatibility list, visit our website. There's not a user manual. Maybe there's something on the back here. Not really. There, there really isn't any instructions, which is uh, extremely surprising to me. Not, I mean, I'm sure I can figure this out on my own, but uh, I know a lot of people, I've done stuff like this before, so I'm not new to this type of product, but I know a lot of people out there, this would be their first time, they'd be, they'd be pretty upset without an instruction manual. And that might be something that got lost when the package was opened. All right, so now we can take apart the card. All right, we've got a screwdriver, Phillips head, and we've got a ton of screws on the back here that we need to remove in order to get the shroud off of this card. So let's go ahead and get to work. These screws are on really All the screws should be removed. Get the focus back. Here we go. There we go. Okay, we're good. So now there should be a, a cable that's connecting the fan to the card for power to the fan. We'll need to remove that. And we can see those are right here. I'm going to put the camera down real fast to unlatch these. There we go. Okay, so you can see that those are removed. Uh, it's just a simple pull. You're not you're not doing anything special. You just pull out. That's it. Uh, jokes to be had there, but I'm not going to make the jokes, guys. You can make your own jokes. Um, all right, so we've got a bear card, and what I do need to do is put this down, and I'm going to put this guy into the box, so that's where it's going to stay until... Man, the focus is really getting messed up. Sorry about that, guys. So this box, I'm gonna move that away now. We're done with this. And we've got the card. I just dropped a screw in the ground, of course. Oh well, RIP screw. All right, so we've got the bear card and it does have some thermal paste on there. So I'm gonna clean that off. And then we're gonna look at matching up this uh, water cool block water cooling block onto the card and uh, applying some fresh thermal paste yo listen up all you haters that think this is a knockoff that's the real deal right there that's the TU102-300-K2-A1. Yeah, so you know that's a real RTX 20 Ti, not some cheap knockoff.
All right, jokes aside, let's get this thing. Let's see what this looks like, man. I'm excited. So this is me again. I'm really good at opening stuff with one hand while I'm holding the camera. I'm so good at this. I'm really good at camera work with one hand while I'm doing something with the other. I'm sure you guys have noticed that. It's like probably one of my best skills. All right, so, wow, that is a lot of copper. Very thick copper. Looks pretty cool. Um, so we're gonna arrange this. Yeah. That looks cool. I'm liking it. I actually really like how it sticks out a little bit too, because this card is, when I was looking at this card in the case, it could have definitely been bigger. There's a lot of room in there, so. This is gonna make it, it's just like an extra inch, but it's a little bit nicer. Um, so we do need to figure out the way that they want us to secure everything. And I would assume they want us to do that on this side. So let's see, yeah, you can see all these, uh, all these holes actually just perfectly match up to be used with um, the same hardware that we were using before basically. They, they do include their own hardware though, so you don't have to reuse the NVIDIA hardware, so that's nice. So everyone's got their own ways of doing thermal paste. There's the P method, there's the spreading it out method, there's the circle method, all sorts of different ways to do it. Um, this GPU is actually really big, so uh, I'm gonna kinda do two P's is what I'm gonna go for here. And that should do it. And now we are going to, these are actually kind of important. Um, so I'm gonna take it apart again. You need to put this on the memory and some other parts so that it's a little bit of a padding between the metal and the memory and other capacitors and stuff like that. So I'm gonna turn off the camera. Before I continue putting all these uh, thermal pads on, I just wanted to show you guys this because I just noticed it. So you can see all the memory chips here. Um, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Skip one, nine, 10, 11. So 11 gigs of memory, right? So that's kind of just fun to see. This is the missing memory where that kind of like makes the difference between what they would call a Titan and uh, a GTX 2080 Ti. Although there isn't a 12 gig Titan out at all that I'm aware of, maybe they're in the plans of making one, I don't know, but there is definitely a spot to make this a 12 gig card if they wanted to. Just thought I'd point that out. So this is a quick little tip for anyone that's ever gonna water cool a video card like this, going through the similar process, it applies to any video card. So you may get to a spot where you're like, man, you know, they supplied me with about a thousand of these little pads uh, that are supposed to go between the block and the, the component, where am I supposed to put them? Well, uh, the obvious way to do it is to actually look at your old cooler and look at where they put the pads. So you can see here that there's pads on all of the memory. And then you can see there's all, more pads right here. I don't know if that's like a power controller or something of that nature, but this is uh, towards the front of the card, which would be these chips right along here. And then if you look at it again, there's another row of pad right here, which would be these chips. I believe these are also power controllers of something of that nature all along there, right? Now, that means that these LR22, LR47 chips right here, these don't need to be covered. They actually fit into a nice little gap, right? So, you know what, you probably can't see it with that view. There's like a little valley of the copper that these guys just fit snug through. But on here, the same thing, there's a little valley right here. And they don't they don't get any cooling. Same with these LR22s right here. So uh, I will continue applying more pads onto here and here. Okay, so I thought that I had just a bunch of little, these little chiclet guys in the package, but there were probably 15 or whatever chiclet guys to cover the memory. And then there was a thin, big, pad and then a wide big pad so I just assume since these were wider this one goes here this one's thinner this one goes here but it's obviously way too long so scissors time okay so they gave me this packet of a bunch of screws oh 
sorry for the zoom in. Just trying to focus. And they had three different, sorry, four different size screws and then some nuts and some washers. And no instructions, as I mentioned. So this is just me winging it. Uh, I believe this is just a universal kit that they throw in with a bunch of different types of kits. And so I'm uh, just guessing and I know I need to get a bunch of these screwed in so I started with the smallest type because it looked like it was fine for what I'm doing um, so these little guys right here and then with the clear plastic washer and I've got one here in this corner and then I've got another one here in this corner and it's definitely holding it together and so I'm just gonna go through and throw in a bunch more screws and come back listen guys I know it's really loud right now there's like an air pump going on in the warehouse and we run it all the time. Guys need to get work done, so I hope the noise isn't bothering you too much, but I don't have a whole lot to tell you other than, damn, look at how cool that looks. I am super happy with how this turned out. I saved a ton of money, and the result is better than I expected. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy, and let's go ahead and see what this looks like in the computer. Uh, one thing to mention is that this case does not offer a vertical mount, and I think this would look really sweet if it was a vertical mount but it's not so let's install it the only way that we can which is me fumbling around with one hand but I can do it guys I can do it it's just not gonna be pretty you can laugh at me and watch me struggle probably knock over the whole thing and break the glass table right there we go okay I'm gonna put it down real quick All right, so this is what it looks like, fully installed. I've even got one little screw right here holding it in place, so it's all screwed down. I think it may be a little bit obvious uh, to most people too that yes, it would look better if it was vertical mounted, but that, as I mentioned, is not an option unless I do a lot of fabricating. And also, it would look pretty sweet with the back plate. I mean, we are going the extra mile in this build for the little extra touches, and I think a back plate would really look great. So I'm definitely going to look into a back plate, uh, but this about wraps up the video. You've seen what this video card looks like now. I think it turned out absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy with the results uh, and looking forward to getting some uh, coolant running through this card and starting to get some uh, overclocks on it and some benchmarks. So stay tuned for the next videos. We're going to keep progressing until we're fully built and can start using this thing. Thanks.